You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Mr. Poole. Morning, Mrs. Sullivan. Off to work? You know it. Oh, Mrs. Sullivan. Yes? I meant to drop off the rent last night. Oh, no hurry. It isn't due yet. I know, but I don't like debts. I'll make sure you get it this evening. That will be just fine. Well, have a good day at the bank. The same as every other day. Oh, excuse me. Were you going out? Just to bring in the paper. Oh, let me get it for you. You don't have to do that. No problem. Here you are. Why, thank you, Mr. Poole. You're the perfect tenant. Absolutely perfect. Paper, get your paper. You have the morning sports final? Sure thing. 25 cents, one quarter of a dollar. Here. Thanks, pal. Paper, get your paper. Who wants a paper morning final? One here, Marty. Sure thing, Mr. Poole. Always got a copy for you. Let me see if I have the right change. Yep. Here you go. Hey, look at that. Is something wrong? Your quarter. It landed on the edge. Didn't even fall over. Well, what do you know? That'll never happen again in a million years. This must be your lucky day. Oh, I hope you're right, Marty. A little luck never hurt anyone. What happened? That car, it hit him. Did you see? Somebody call an ambulance. Mr. Hector B. Poole, resident of the Big Apple, the Glass Canyon, hoping to survive an assault on his senses, all six of them. Flip a coin and keep on flipping it. What are the odds? Half the time it will come up heads and half the time tails. But in one wild, freakish chance in a million, it will land on its edge. Mr. Poole, a bright human coin on his way to the bank in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, A Penny for Your Thoughts, starring David Eigenberg with Stacey Keach as your narrator. Stand back! Look what you did! I didn't see him, honest. He, he just stepped off the curb. Where's the ambulance? Oh, oh, what happened? Easy, mister. You all right? Oh, I think so. Just give me a hand. Look, lie still. I, I'll get a doctor. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't need a doctor. I mean, if you'll help me get up. I'll... You sure? You ought to take it easy. Yeah, at least get an x-ray. Uh... Why? No scrapes, no scratches, no broken bones. I seem to be fine. He should stay down. I would. Something like that, he could sue the guy's pants off. Pardon? Oh, I, I just said, uh, wait till you get to the hospital. You, you never know. No, no need for that, really. Oh, you don't know how sorry I am, sir. Oh, no harm done. I swear, I didn't see you step off the curb. If you were hurt, God, I could never forgive myself. You clumsy idiot. I wish you'd broken your fool neck. What did you say? I said if you were hurt, I could never forgive my... No, no, not that. The other part. I, I see no reason for you to be abusive. Abusive? I should have been more careful, but it, it was equally your fault. Are you certain you're all right, sir? I think so. Thank heaven for that. I'm simply trying to say how grateful I am that you weren't injured. Lame brain jaywalker. That asinine stunt took ten years off my life. Now, see here, I'm not Let a Let me brush you off. 
Where were you headed? I was on my way to work. Well, I'll be happy to give you a lift if you like. Uh, no thanks. Uh, it's not far. I think I'd... I'd rather walk. Watch stop this morning? What's that? <laughs> Must have. Not like you to be late. Oh, oh, yes. No, I mean no. I mean, no, it's not. It's 9-10. Well, something happened on the way. Did it? Uh, Bran, can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Um, well, why are they all whispering? Who? The customers. What about them? It's just that... They're usually so quiet. I mean, nobody talks out loud in a bank, but this morning... What do you mean? You don't hear them? Hear what? <laughs> oh, I get it. Have a late night, did you? No, but you know, on the way here, I... I... Better grab some coffee. Miss Turner just put some on. Huh? Mr. Bagby. In his office. Where else would he be? Oh, thank you, Brand. Well, I better get started. Yes, you do that. Oh, I knew he'd crack sooner or later. Mr. Perfect. Hello? No, the vice president is on another line. May I take a message? Very well. Eileen. Morning, Hector. How, um, how long has he been here? A half hour. I wouldn't bother him, though. He's got an important call. All right, I'll wait till he's finished. Oh, Felicia, baby! You know I care, but... How would it look? And besides, Gladys has a nose for these things. <laughs> of course she would. I can see the headlines. Prominent banker divorces wife to marry chorus girl. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 Felicia, you misunderstand. I love chorus girls. I mean, not all of them. Only you. Yes, yes, that's right. Look, how about this weekend? Just you and me. <clears throat> yes? Uh, Mr. Bagby? Come in. Hold on. Someone's at the door. Yes, what is it, Poole? Uh, Mr. Bagby, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I'd like to explain. Explain what? Why I was late, sir. Were you? Ten minutes, to be exact. I didn't notice. Well, as you know, sir, my record for being prompt is spotless. I pride myself on attention to duty. Yes, yes, Poole, everyone is aware of your devotion to the bank. Well, you see, a strange thing happened, a very strange thing. Yes, uh-huh. Get on with it, you simpering idiot. You think she's going to stay on the line forever? You ruined my weekend with Felicia. I'll string you up by the thumbs. Your weekend, sir. What? Spoil your weekend. Oh, I wouldn't want to do that. What are you mumbling about? Look, I've got an important call here. Very pressing matter. Get on with it, man. No, oh, of course, I understand. He said weekend. Good Lord. You don't suppose he knows about Felicia? It's impossible. I've been so careful, so so discreet. There. I've placed her I've placed it on hold. Now then, you had something to tell me? Pool? Pool. Another time, sir. I can see that you're busy. I better get to my work. Poor Mr. Poole. He looks so tired and pale. I'm alright. Oh, 
Good morning, Mr. Poole. Good morning, Miss Turner. Did you say something? I didn't know I looked that bad. Oh, you don't. You look very well today. As do you. Oh, why, thank you. Would you like some coffee? Oh, uh, not just yet, but thanks for asking. Say something? No, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, good day to you, sir. Everything in apple pie order, I trust? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I bet you're the one who sent me that overdraft notice. No, sir. No what? I don't have anything to do with overdrafts. I work over there in the loan department. You do? Just see one of the tellers. I'm sure that they can straighten it out for you. Sure, <clears throat> sure. Uh... I'll, I'll do that. Pool? Yes. You know Mr. Sykes of Ajax Cement? Oh, yes, Mr. Sykes. How do you do? His loan has been approved. Uh, will you see that the papers are in order? Of course. When do I get the check? Uh, Mr. Pool will take care of that for you. Uh, here's the file. Certainly, Mr. Brand. Won't you sit down, Mr. Sykes? Everything's there. Oh, I'm sure it is. The check's for $200,000. I see. A loan for $200,000. That's quite a sum. Expanding the business, Mr. Sykes? That's right. Wrong. Uh, well, which is it? Huh? You are aware that this loan must be repaid within 90 days. Sure I am. In full. No, uh, 200,000. That's all I need. Put half a lucky lady in the six, split the rest between Nimble Runner and Crinoline at five to one. Nobody will ever know I can pay back the loan with enough left over to save the company. It's gotta work. There's no other way. Or what? Bankruptcy? What did you say? Nimble Runner and Lucky Lady. Now look here, young man. And Crinoline at five to one? What? That's a funny name. I don't have time for this. Am I going to get the check or not? Everything all right here? It better be. I'm not sure. What's going on, Poole? Uh, something wrong, Mr. Sykes. I don't know, Mr. Bagby. I signed everything. Well, then what's the problem? He just told me he's borrowing the money to bet on the horses. What? That is what you said, isn't it, sir? I said nothing of the kind. And then he said that Ajax Cement was bankrupt. Ah, he's mad. Pool. Doubtless there's been a mistake. There certainly has. If you'll come with me, I'll correct it at once. I'll talk to you later, Pool. Uh, but Mr. Beck... In my office. Yes, sir. My job. He said. I heard the whole thing. I'm the one who took his application. What's going on, Poole? Will you tell me that? What? If if I could tell you, I would. But I honestly don't know. How would you like that, ma'am? Can I have it once, please, and some quarters for the laundromat? Of course. 180, 190, 200. Just a moment, I'll get your receipt. I want it in the form of a cashier's check. Oh, I'll need to get it countersigned. A uh, money order, then. Yes, sir. That can't be all I have. Check the balance again. I've already checked it twice. If you'd like a printout of your transactions... I would, yes, so I can compare it to my records. There must be some mistake. 401, 402... 403, 20 years, the same window, not one promotion. Nope, not me. Hello, Smithers. Oh, 
Hello, Mr. Poole. Don't worry, you'll get that promotion. Do you really think so? I mean, what promotion? Stick with it, you'll see. Yes, of course, b but how? Have a little faith. Finally happening. It is? Yep. Old nose of the grindstone seems to have flipped out. Who are you talking about? Poole. Who else? He's been acting goofy all morning. Well, why shouldn't he? He's entitled to once in a while. He does all the work around here. <laughs> Guys like that are all alike. Gutless wonders. Put the pressure on and they go to pieces. Know what I mean? I'm not sure that I do. You phony. Don't you know a real gentleman when you see one? Got any of that coffee left? Oh, uh, hi, Pool. Certainly. Here you are. Smells good. It's fresh. Nice and hot, too. You do all of the work and get none of the credit. You should speak up more and assert yourself. But I guess that's not in your nature. Miss Turner? Yes? There's something I've been meaning to say to you. There is? And I hope you won't be offended. Oh, I'm sure I won't. But, well... Yes, Mr. Poole? I want to thank you. Thank me? For your kind thoughts. I don't think I quite understand, Mr. Poole. Romancing the help, eh, Poole? Brand, please. Well, who can blame you? Miss Turner's the prettiest girl in the new accounts department. since the last time I went to the circus. Oh, I'm sure that's not true. Yeah, a lot of action around the old coffee station lately. That's no surprise. Not much chance for socializing on the job, is there? Brand, if I could get a word in... Yeah, go ahead. You were saying, Mr. Poole? She's probably a tiger. That the sweet prim ones out of their cages and they refer to the jungle. That's enough, Brand. Hey, watch it! Oh, sorry. You spilled coffee all over my shirt. I'll get a napkin. It was an accident. No, it wasn't. You did that deliberately. He said it was an accident. I'll see you later about this pool. Good for you. I really didn't intend to do that. I'm sure you didn't. He was only joking. Maybe he was and maybe he wasn't. But he sure had it coming. Well, I suppose I should get back to my desk. Uh, yes, and I suppose... So. Or else it will be time for lunch. Will it? I mean, oh, it will. And then we'll all be having our lunches, won't we? I, I guess you're right. I mean, those who brought them. And those who didn't will go out somewhere. For lunch, I mean. Alone or together. Yes, yes, they certainly will. Well, back to the old grindstone. It's been nice talking with you. Nice talking with you, too. Bye now. Uh, bye. Oh, uh, Miss Turner. Mr. Poole? One more thing. I hope... Yes? I hope you... have a nice day. I feel the same way. Exactly. Such a gentleman. It isn't fair. It just isn't fair. I said, don't worry, Smithers. Who? Oh, Poole, uh, were you speaking to me? Mr. Bagby's a fair man. Mr. Bagby? Yes, I'm sure he is. Good things come to those who wait. What's he watching me for? Oh, no reason. Don't let it distract you. They'll be sorry. Not much longer now. At 4.30 this afternoon, I go into the vault like I always do. I'll take my briefcase with me. No one will suspect a thing. I'll fill it with currency and be on a ship to Bermuda by nightfall. <laughs> yes, indeed. All that money. As much as I can carry. I wonder how long it will take them to discover it's gone. It's not possible. Smithers? Oh, 
Miller. Hi there, Mr. Poole. Got a minute? Sure do. Pretty quiet morning. Is that what you call it? Well, as opposed to payday, then everybody and his brother shows up. Get a little rowdy sometimes, trying to cut line and everything. But I keep him in order. Teach him respect for the uniform. <laughs> you can count on me. I know I can. That's why I wanted a word in your ear. What's up? How long have you been a guard here? Uh, quite a few years now. Get my pension before long. And that gun in your holster, is it? Is it the same one you've always had? Sure is. Nothing beats a 38. Keep it oiled up real good. You could use it then. I mean, if you had to. Well, what do you think I got it on my belt for, Hector? To hold my pants up? Good. That's good. Uh, why do you ask? I'm not sure, but I suggest taking up a post by the door, keep your eyes open, and don't say anything to anyone just yet. I get you. Mum's the word. There he is. Was he waiting for me? Hello again. Miss Turner. I was just going back to my desk. Perfect timing. Isn't it? I, I mean, it is. Miss Turner, may I speak to you? Any time at all. What I have to tell you is very important. Yes, Mr. Poole? Not here in front of everyone. Dreadfully important. Come with me. Where are we going? Somewhere private. I like the sound of that. Mr. Jones's office is empty since he transferred. Next to Mr. Bagby's, no one ever goes in there. Perfect. That seems like a good idea. If you're sure you don't mind. As long as you can spare the time. This won't take long. Take all the time you want. Well, what is it? You'll think I'm crazy. Is something wrong? Terribly, and I don't know who else to talk to. I'm here. Miss Turner, I keep hearing voices. People talking, their lips don't move. But I can hear their voices clearly. I've got this ringing in my head. Oh, no. Well, it's, it's not what you think, Miss Turner. I mean, I, I can read people's minds. I don't know if I can help you uh, with a thing like that. I'll prove it to you. Think. Think something. Anything at all. Well, I have to hand it to him. This is an original approach. Why did it take him so long to gather up his courage? Because it only happened this morning. What did? At least that was the first time I noticed it. He didn't notice me until this morning? No, not you. The voices. Mr. Poole... They won't stop. Perhaps you should lie down for a few minutes. Maybe later. I'm trying to tell you something. I know you are. No, this is serious. Do you think I enjoy hearing people's thoughts? I'm sure I have no idea. Well, try to imagine. It's like seeing people with their clothes off. Which people would that be? Well, uh, Miss Turner, I, I have reason to believe that someone may try to rob the bank this afternoon. Mr. Brand was right. He's coming unglued. No, I am not unglued. It's true. I mean, at least I think it is. You heard them say that? Well, in a manner of speaking. Well, then, in that case, you should do something about it. But what if I'm wrong? You have a responsibility to the bank, to the stockholders and depositors. I suppose I do. We could talk about it over lunch. I mean, one could, two people, whoever they might be... If they wanted to, that is. Otherwise, just one, alone, talking about it to himself. Uh, of course, that might be a bit lonely, for some people at least. Unless... There's no time to waste. No, definitely not. I have to get out of here. Why? I mean, what's your hurry? Have we finished our conversation? I, I thought... I've got to tell Mr. Bagby. From now on, Mr. Poole... You may call me Helen. Come in. Mr. Bagby. Oh, there you are, Poole. I want to talk to you. Sir, I... I'm worried about you, Poole. About me? But, but, sir... I've always considered you one of my best men. So why, Poole? Why what? Just tell me straight out. We lost the Ajax cement account this morning because of that nonsense a while ago. Something wrong at home. 
The wife, perhaps? I'm not married. Oh. Well, something's bothering you. Yes. Have a seat. I'd prefer to stand. Then out with it. Well, I, I don't know how to put this, Mr. Bagby. Speak up, Poole. I'm with you. You won't believe me. Of course I'll believe you. You're as honest as the day is long. Well, you've been like a son to me. Well, a son-in-law, at least. If you were, which you're not, legally speaking. But nonetheless... Mr. Bagby, Mr. Smithers is... is... Smithers? Well, what about him? He's planning to rob the bank. Say what? See, I told you. Would you mind repeating that? Smithers. Old Mr. Smithers? Old Mr. Smithers. He's sitting on his stool right now, planning it out. At precisely 4.30, he's going into the vault. He does that every day. Exactly. But this time, he'll have his briefcase with him, and he'll fill it up with banknotes, as much as he can carry. And by tonight, he'll be on a boat to the Caribbean. How do you know? Um, I heard him talking about it. But well, he's one of our oldest and most trusted employees. Well, well, he was here when I took over the bank. I absolutely refuse to believe. I swear it, sir. He has it all worked out. Wait a minute. I take your point. Who's the one who ends up stealing the company funds? Isn't it always the most trusted employee? The man you'd least suspect? The man who's completely reliable for years until that one moment when everybody relaxes their guard and... Gotcha! He strikes! Good work, Poole! I wish it weren't true. I sort of admire Mr. Smithers. He's always there, steady as a rock, going his own way. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't overheard it myself. Well, no time for sentiment. Quick now, tell me the details. Um... Uh, well... At 4.30 on the dot, it starts. Okay, and Mr. Smithers will finish counting out his drawer as he always does, by the numbers. Thank you, folks. Good night now. Don't work yeah, too hard. And as soon as we lock the doors... See you Wednesday. You take care now. Good night, Rich. He'll close up his cage. Count down the drawer. 73, 74... 75, plus the bills. He'll stand up and go to the vault with the deposit, as he always does. The last teller, with his briefcase. He'll be back there alone to lock up the vault. Only this time, things will be different. When he comes out, his briefcase will be heavy. Very heavy. Miller, may I see you a moment? Yes, sir. Rich, let me out, please. Okay, be right there. I'm waiting. Gotcha. What? I'll take that briefcase. Here, here. What? Shall I cuff him? Not till we see the evidence. Looks pretty heavy to me. Dump it on the desk. I'm your witness. Sure thing. What do you think you're doing? What does it look like? Your mistake, Mr. Smithers, was in assuming that we were all asleep. A great mistake. But nothing gets by this institution. As a matter of fact, I've had my eye on you for a long time. You sure this is his briefcase? Of course it is. Duly noted. He admits it. <clears throat> One half sandwich. Clip-on necktie. Change of socks. Comb. One book. How to profit from Armageddon. And, uh, seven ballpoint pens. Where's the money? Has everyone gone insane? What money? Pool! Where's that idiot pool? Here, sir. So he was going to steal the money. He was going to take a trip to Bermuda. That was his story, huh? Mr. Bagby, I heard him. And who was he talking to, Mr. Poole? Well, he wasn't talking to anyone, not exactly. Oh? What was he doing? Sending smoke signals? He was... thinking. He was what? He was thinking. 
Well, that explains everything. Mr. Smithers, please forgive us all for this unfortunate intrusion. Well, I... I guess we all make mistakes. Oh, I should have known that what I was told was impossible on the face of it. Poole, do you know what I'm thinking? I'm fired. Kindly clear out your desk at once. Mr. Smithers, I don't know what to say. I'm very sorry. Return Mr. Smithers' possessions and let him pass. Right away. How did you know? What? It's true, of course, Mr. Poole. Yes, it's a little dream of mine. Have you ever had a dream? I have, often. People look at me and all they see is a funny little man, frayed and old, and they never know. I have the dream almost every day. I had it yesterday and the day before that. Well, I don't always plan on Bermuda, though. Sometimes it's London. Paris, Fiji, beautiful, exotic places, thousands of miles from here. Places where there are no ledgers to keep, where I'm not a little man with no future and no past. I think of filling my briefcase with the bank's money, but I never go through with it. Do you know why? I've lived with it too long. I'm old and set in my ways. And besides, Mr. Poole, I'm a coward. Smithers, please. Will you open the door now, please, Rich? Sure. Uh, take care of yourself. Can I help you with anything? I've got it. I guess this is goodbye, Miss Turner. It may be a blessing in disguise for your career, a man with your abilities. Much more than mind reading. Strange delusion. But with the proper medical care, it'll go away. It's not a delusion, Miss Turner. There, you see, I can read your thoughts. But how? Until this morning, everything was normal. I was happy. Well, it, at least I wasn't unhappy. I had my friends, my job, and now this. I thought it was a gift. Well, it's no gift. It's an embarrassment. It's been nothing but trouble to me. I never imagined people were the way they are. You know, we do things without thinking about them, and we think things without the slightest intention of doing them. I've learned one thing. People are not what we think they are. Ooh. Oh, thank heaven I caught you. That was the Ajax Cement Company on the phone. Mr. Sykes has been arrested. I know, for gambling with the company money. I tried to tell you that earlier. Two hundred thousand dollars if that loan had gone through. Mr. Poole, <clears throat> about your job. It's still yours, if you're interested. Why, that windbag. Mr. Poole, if you can really hear me, you're wasted in that job. If you let him take you back on the same terms, you're crazy. Everybody knows you should be in charge of the accounts department. Well, what do you say? Well, everyone knows I should be in charge of the accounts department, Mr. Bagby. In charge? Good. That would mean he'd move into Mr. Jones's old office. That would mean he'd... I'd move into Mr. Jones's old office. Now, really, Poole? This is absurd. What am I standing here wasting time for? Don't let him bamboozle you. Felicia's waiting. Man, oh man, what a weekend this is going to be. Stand up for yourself. He needs you more than you need him. Uh, would you excuse us, Miss Turner? We have some business to discuss. All right, if you're sure. I'm sure. Business? What business? The business of Felicia and your wife, Gladys. What? I know all about it. I know where you're meeting her and when. What's impossible? No one knows about the trip or the apartment on Riverside Drive. Riverside Drive, Mr. Bagby. Am I right? 
Oh, all right, you win. In charge of accounts in the office next to mine. You won't say anything to anyone, will you? Not a word, Mr. Bagby. Not a word. Oh, and I forgot, there's one more thing. At the bank's expense, I'd like you to buy a round-trip ticket to Bermuda. Have it made out in the name of J.L. Smithers. I think he'd like a vacation. Are you out of your mind? Mr. Bagby? Oh. One ticket to Bermuda. Shall we go, Miss Turner? If you like. I'd go anywhere with you. But I wish you'd call me Helen. Have a good night, folks. We'll try. May I see you home, Helen? Well, I don't know. Of course you can, Hector. What do you think I've been waiting for? Paper, get your afternoon paper. Latest stocks. Oh, just a second, do you mind? Not at all. Oh, hi, Mr. Poole. Well, was I right or was I right? Was it your lucky day? I'd say so. Uh, give me a paper, will you? Sure, this one's on the house. Oh, no, no, no. I don't like to owe anybody. Heads. You win. Hey, why'd you do that? I had that other quarter standing up all day, and nobody knocked it over till now. Well, I guess if you're the guy who stood it up, you're the guy who can knock it down. There goes your luck. Could be it's just beginning. Paper, get your late edition paper. What was that all about? Oh, nothing. Wait. What is it? Think something, Helen. Think anything. Oh, I am. Believe me. Did you get that? No, I didn't. I didn't hear anything at all. It's gone. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> if you say so, dear. <laughs> Toss a coin, any coin, and one time in a million, it will land on its edge. But all it takes to knock it over is a slight vibration, a light blow, or even a vagrant dream. Mr. Hector B. Poole, a human coin on edge for a brief time, in the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered while supplies last at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. A Penny for Your Thoughts, starring David Eigenberg with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and written for The Twilight Zone by George Clayton Johnson. Heard in the cast were Michelle Graff, Doug James, Jamie Barron, Jeff Lupiton, Kurt Nabig, Joby Cerny, Frenette Lebo, Peggy Roeder, Alex Sopner, Carl Amari, Karen Olson, Tracy Hernandez, Christina Verba, and Vince Amari. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design and custom Foley effects for the Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Michael Slaybach, and Matt Sorrow. 
To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking.